At the White House on Tuesday, a young man from Iowa, 25-year-old Staff Sergeant Sal Junter, will become the first living soldier to earn the Medal of Honor since the Vietnam War. It's the nation's highest military award for heroism in battle, and it's given for acts of extreme bravery in the face of almost certain death. Sel Junta earned this honor for his actions on a remote hilltop in eastern Afghanistan on the night of October 25, 2007, for repeatedly running into enemy fire to save American lives and rescue a fellow soldier from the hands of the Taliban. Tonight, you'll hear about what happened and the events leading up to that night from Sel Junta and the men who fought with him. You'll also hear about a place known as the Karangal Valley, where the Taliban are allied with Al-Qaeda and put up such a fight that the U.S. eventually gave up on the valley and pulled out last April. When Sel Junta was serving there at the age of just 22, it was considered one of the roughest tours of duty in Afghanistan. The story will continue in a moment. Did you ever wake up in the morning and think, what the hell am I doing here? Woke up every morning thinking, what the hell am I doing here? Really? No, we know what we're doing there, but what the hell are we doing here? In the Karangal Valley. In the Karangal Valley. Was there anywhere in the Karangal Valley that you could have felt safe? Maybe in your dreams. <laughs> For Sal Junta and the men of the 173rd Airborne Brigade, this is what home was like for 15 months. The valley itself is not very big, just six miles long and a mile across. Go, come on, come on, come on! But it was so dangerous here for US soldiers that it became known to Americans as the Valley of Death. And when Battle Company arrived here, they could see how hard it had been on the soldiers they were replacing. Some guys talking to themselves, some guys wouldn't even come up to us. They wanted nothing to do with us. You know, none of us understood why. And it wasn't long after that we figured out why they, were, they didn't want to talk to us. Why was it? That valley just took every ounce of life out of you. 26-year-old Staff Sergeant Eric Gallardo was Sal Junta's squad leader, and he was back in Afghanistan on another tour of duty when we met up with him, along with their ammo bearer, Sergeant Michael Burns, and their machine gunner, Sergeant Brett Perry. That 15 months in the Korngal Valley, it was hell on earth. This was the view from their tiny base looking out into the valley, enemy territory for as far as they could see. There's somebody right out there trying to kill you every day. They wake up every day and they want to kill you. They weren't just hitting us on patrol. They were hitting us where we lived. So there was guys, you know, who refused to go to the bathroom during the day because you'd have to go out in the open. They wouldn't risk it. They'd wait till night, hold it until the dark. They were far from their base when Sel Junta earned the Medal of Honor, deep inside the Taliban stronghold in the valley on a major offensive. 2-1 uh, got hit, break. The soldiers believe this attack on the third day was carried out by the same group of Taliban fighters who would later ambush Junta and his men. I need you to get to the LZ with those two wounded in action. It was filmed by Elizabeth Rubin on assignment for the New York Times magazine. I called for the Warhawk 3 element to pick up our KA. One of their most respected soldiers, Staff Sergeant Larry Rugel, was killed when his position was overrun. And that was just a big, big blow to us all of us, I think. And it was kind of, it felt like a momentum shift. As the soldiers listened to the Taliban on their radios, they now sounded more confident, and what they said was chilling. They were saying, uh, we want a body, let's get a body. We want a body? Yeah. They wanted to see if they could get an American body this time. Sure enough, on the last night of the operation, October 25th, they were ambushed. It happened just as they were heading back to base. Sergeant Joshua Brennan was in the lead. Behind him was Specialist Franklin Eckroad. Sergeant Gallardo and Junta followed next. Everything, everything happened. The world happened. And that next step, tracers, bullets, RPGs, explosions, wings, zings, dings, snaps, pops, cracks. Based on diagrams we obtained from the U.S. military, this is what happened. At least a dozen Taliban fighters executed an L-shaped ambush, firing at the soldiers from two sides simultaneously, pinning down the entire unit in an instant. If we could have done it, we would have done it to them. It was, it was perfectly, 
done. Did you know instantly that they were right on you? You can see the muzzle flashes. They're there. I mean, less of a distance than you can throw a baseball. They were inside that, that gap. The two men at the front were down and cut off from the rest of their squad by heavy fire. And I started sprinting their way. I got about five, six feet. And that's when I just had RPGs hit everywhere. You were completely pinned down? I was done. I was pinned. And so, you know, I just started turning at them and shooting. I, shooting, backpedaling. And right when he started coming back, I watched his head kind of, kind of hit, kind of. I fell. While I'm falling is when I got shot in the helmet. I remember thinking, did I just get shot in the helmet? Did that just happen? So you had to get him out of that spot. I was just going to grab him and just pull him back. Before I know it, Junta is coming in the open, and he's pulling me out of the open. Did you think, thank God he's here? Uh, I, was, I was on my back like a turtle. And if Junta hadn't come to you? I'd have been stuck there, just laying there for them to shoot at. As he was dragging Eric Galado to cover, Sal Junta was hit twice. His body armor saved him. I got hit on the lower part of my front vest. Of your bulletproof vest? I don't know if it's bulletproof, but it definitely can stop one or two. Did you feel that? I felt it. There's adrenaline and everything going, but it displaced the weight across my whole chest. I couldn't ask for anything better than that because a bullet just hit me and I felt air. Junta, Galado, and two of their gunners charged forward. They were trying to reach their two wounded men pinned down at the front. You're running into a wall of bullets. Together. So that's what we did. And we threw, we threw our first grenades and we ran and we shot. And we did it again and we got closer and then Eckrode was there. Specialist Eckrode had been shot four times. Galado stopped to help him. He was just hysterical. You know, he kept telling us, I see them, I saw them, they have him, they have who? You, know, you didn't know? We didn't know. Could you hear what Eckrode was saying? He said that he was shot, and, I mean, Gallardo was there, was taken care of. Sergeant Gallardo told us that Eckrode was hysterical, not because he was wounded, that he said he just kept screaming, they've got him. And he didn't know what Eckrode meant at that moment. No, I never heard that. It makes it easier sometimes not knowing everything. What Sal Junta didn't know at the time was that the Taliban already had 22-year-old Sergeant Joshua Brennan, a tough, easygoing soldier who had earned a bronze star and had been named Soldier of the Year on his first deployment to Afghanistan. This is Brennan with Junta just a few days before the ambush. There was no one on the squad he was closer to, and it was Junta who would save him from dying in enemy hands. In the midst of the ambush, he ran head-on into the Taliban guns, through their fighting positions, and into a clearing where Taliban fighters were carrying Joshua Brennan away. I saw three guys, and I saw two of them carrying one guy, and one guy had his arms, and one guy had his legs, and they were, they were dragging him. And Did you see their faces? I saw, I saw their hats and their beards, and they had, I saw their guns. I saw their guns were slung on their back because their hands were full. What did you see when you ran up towards Brennan and Junta was there? What did you actually see? Uh, Junta firing, Junta hitting. I saw the one body falling. I saw Brennan's body being dropped, and I saw the other shadow running, and Junta was still shooting. I shot one guy and I, he falls and the other guy was already running away the whole time because I was just running and shooting, just closing the gap. And the one guy dropped and I start going for the other guy and by that time I, I was at Brennan. Did you know the moment when you grabbed him you knew he was badly wounded, you could see instantly? I just started assessing, you know, and then he started struggling breathing. And he's complaining that there's something in his mouth and it's part of his mouth that's in his mouth. He knew we were there. He was drifting out of consciousness, but you know, he knew it was us now. Did he say anything about being taken? No. He just he wanted to make sure we were there with him. 
The ambush had lasted just three minutes. Sergeant Galado still had to get his squad back to base, hoping they wouldn't get hit again. They made it back safely, but later that night, Joshua Brennan died in surgery. I remember just hearing that and just walking off and just finding a corner and just lost it. I couldn't believe it. I needed to see how Junta was doing. How was Junta doing? I've seen him better. Did he get the significance of what he had done? No, he didn't think anything of it. You know, when you look at it, yeah, it was a big deal. He just prevented the enemy from having that huge victory and us having to go in a, an even deeper part of the Korangal Valley to where nobody has ever been and try and find an American soldier. You might never have found him. No, yeah, that's something I don't really like to think about. The last thing Brennan ever saw was us. You know, he saw us fighting for him. You know, the first face he saw was Junta coming up to his side. We fought for him. And he's home with his family now because of that. I have never given everything. Sergeant Joshua Brennan gave everything. So did Specialist Hugo Mendoza, the team's medic, who was killed in the first moments of the ambush. Specialist Franklin Eckrode survived his wounds, and Sergeant Eric Galado was awarded the Silver Star for his actions that night. Sal Junta, who's now serving at a U.S. base in Italy, is not yet able to reconcile their losses with becoming an American hero. I'm not at peace with that at all. And, and, and coming and talking about it and people wanting to shake my hand because of it, it hurts me because it's not what I want. And to be with so many people doing so much stuff and then to be singled out and, and put forward I mean, everyone did something. Okay, someone wrote this about this, and then someone else approved it, and the story was told, and then handshakes were made, and then sooner or later, I'm talking to the President of the United States. I don't see how that happened. Like it or not, Sal Junta is now part of an elite fraternity. There are only 86 Medal of Honor recipients alive today. For the rest of his life, he'll enjoy certain privileges, like a guaranteed seat at presidential inaugurations. And he'll be honored every year at events like this. But it's something he may never be comfortable with. What kind of soldier are you? I'm average. I'm mediocre. You're mediocre? I mean, yeah. This is only one moment, I mean. I don't think that I did anything that anyone else that I was with wouldn't have done. I was in the position to do it. That was what needed to be done, so that's what I did. This is the single greatest honor that the military can bestow on its own. And it comes right from the President of the United States himself. That's pretty good for a mediocre soldier. Think how good the great soldiers are. Go to 60minutesovertime.com to hear what Staff Sergeant Junta's wife thinks about her husband's heroism. Sponsored by Pfizer.